Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 321, featuring a review of a game called Underrail. Now this is a new indie game, it's a seven year labor of love by, uh, mostly by one guy named Stig. I think it's pretty awesome, especially if you like the first two Fallout games. There's a lot to it and a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Underrail. And here we go folks, a little game called Underrail. A, start, let's start off as a one man project uh, from a guy named Stig out of Serbia. It took him seven years. He eventually teamed up with some other folks to get this out the door. And I'm really glad he did because it is an awesome game for those of us that like the old school fallouts. Uh, there's a lot of innovative stuff that Stig has put together here. Now he's got a difficulty level that's not that, not that big of a deal, but the experience system is kind of interesting. Uh, you have the classic XP, which is what you would expect. You get XP for killing monsters and using skills. Or you can try this oddity, oddity XP system, which I've never heard of that before, but basically little special items will drop off of certain critters. You can find things in chests and safes, and that will level you up instead. I mean, you still have to fight the monsters to get to the lockbox, so you're not going to get out of combat necessarily, but it makes the leveling uh, experience process a little bit more interesting in my opinion, so I'm going to go with that system. Got quite a few portraits to choose from. I I'm not sure actually if you can upload your own portrait or make your own for those who uh, <laughs> would be interested in that. Uh, we do have some characters like this one with a mask on so you can always pretend like that's you under the mask. Now these stats are uh, worth really looking very carefully at these. Uh, it really does have a strong impact. Let me, get, let me back up a little bit. You know, this game does not baby you at all. Especially on normal difficulty. I can't imagine what that hardcore difficulty must be like. But you really need to be thinking about what type of character you want to create. You want the strong melee type, you want a sneaky rogue, you want a psionic, a sort of magic user-like class. And all these uh, statistics will play into not only that, but also the crafting system. It's also a big part of the game. So you can read these detailed descriptions here and see how all this works together. Uh, so agility is more about stealth dodging and evasion. Dexterity is more of the lock picking type stuff. I think it has a critical hit uh, effects. Constitution, pretty much what you would expect. Uh, you don't get that many choice. You don't, at least I, you know, in 12 hours I think I've only managed to raise these stats once. Uh, so you don't want to just uh, pick some at random. I mean really think about the character you want to create. Then we get into these skills and you notice we have a lot of points and man you're gonna need every point. Uh, so again you probably don't want that jack of all trades in terms of offense, so think about what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to go for dodge here, max that out. Most of the initial fights are melee, and I was just getting the. <laughs> just getting chewed up. I mean, just every, every round I was getting hit, 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 hit. So maybe pumping that dodge up all the way will help with that. Uh, hacking. And lockpicking seem to me to be pretty much essential in the game. Uh, there's lots of doors that are locked, lots of chests that are locked. Uh, some mission critical. Uh, you can sometimes get around those using trap doors or whatnot, but I think it's worth picking uh, <laughs> picking lockpicking, getting that maxed, maxed out. Uh, go ahead and put a couple of points into throwing as well into traps because that's a kind of interesting strategic possibilities with those with grenades and uh, you can actually set up a battleground pretty cool. Uh, biology, uh, another one that surprisingly is uh, vital so go ahead and max that out. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, this other stuff, uh, the sonics, the social, I find less important. I guess there's some situations where those might come in handy but you've only got so many points. Uh, fortunately you do get 40 points at least that's what I get the first time you level. I don't know if that stays at 40 or if you get more or less sometimes, but uh, don't worry too much if you screw this part up because you do get plenty of points later and you can uh, tailor them <laughs> accordingly. Uh, by the way, the mechanics, electronics, chemistry, biology, all of this stuff has to do with the crafting system and also ties in some of the, uh, the feats we'll see here in a second. Also, what's a cool, this, this idea of synergies is kind of neat. So if you pump up your electronics, 
Uh, that gives you a perk for your hacking, see? So only, although I've only got 12 points in the hacking, I actually have 14. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Okay, so I'm going to go into feats and pick this one called Doctor. You can heal any wound with bandages. And you get 25% more health from uh, health restoring medications. Absolutely vital. Uh, you're going to be taking lots of damage unless you want to go running all the way back to the hospital every time. And believe me, that is a huge, tedious <laughs> mess. Uh, you're going to want that one. Uh, the bandages are a lot cheaper than those uh, syringes are, so you'll be really glad you took that. Otherwise, I'm not really sure uh, what to pick. Uh, uh, the pack rat hound unless you carry more, and that could be another time saver if you don't want to keep running back and forth. <laughs> uh, there's no sort of uh, <clears throat> instant teleport kind of things. Uh, maybe eventually, I don't know. Uh, but at the beginning, I was doing an awful lot of running all the way back to the base and all the way back to the quest area. Uh, so I think anything you can do to minimize that's going to help. I'm just going to focus this guy completely on healing, get the fast metabolism and the doctor skills, and that, that should help a lot, I think. Now one thing the developer didn't do is go out and spend millions on a professional voice acting crew. Uh, so you're going to be reading quite a lot. Uh, that doesn't bother me at all. I can actually read this stuff fairly quickly. And it's, it's well written. Pretty intriguing scenario too. It's, it's kind of got something in common with the Fallout games. I mean it's been some type of apocalypse. Uh, but here the, the setting is in the distant future. And humanity lives underground in this vast system of rails. Uh, they call it a Metro Station States system. And we're a new member of one of these, and we're going to have duties and obligations uh, to our state, as you'll see. I think it's called the SGS. Uh, not quite clear yet if we're the good guys. I, I assume we are. I don't know how deeply they go into uh, factions and all that. I did get to some rather dark moments later where it seemed like I didn't have any uh, clearly uh, positive ethical choices. So, there's definitely some moral dilemmas in here as well. Uh, but here at the beginning, we're just kind of getting familiar with the this pretty enormous base, meeting some of the characters. Uh, there's quite a bit to do around the base before we get out and start exploring. Uh, there's been this big earthquake, which explains, I guess, why we can only <laughs> access certain areas at the beginning. Uh, it's kind of a nice contrivance. Okay, I think we're through that initial dialogue and into the game proper. Now here's Vinsel. An unexpected yawn interrupts Vinsel. He instinctively raises his left hand to cover his mouth, forgetting that he is wearing a respirator. <laughs> Tiny smile creeps up on your face due to the very fact. Okay, continue. Excuse me. All in all, Matt, as far as I'm concerned, we're done here. And so you can either stick around and practice your combat skills and learn how to do it if it's the first time playing through it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip the tutorial though. It's, to tell you the truth, it's pretty basic. I mean, if you play any, if you play the Fallout games <laughs> or pretty much any turn-based uh, game, you're gonna get this. Okay, uh, and leave him be. He's gonna take us back to our private quarters. It's kind of neat. You can uh, put stuff in the shelves in the Foot Locker. And got a couple of, uh, I think, a couple of uh, cabinets there. You have your computer. You have a compass right off the bat, a couple hundred credits. Let's check these messages and see what it is we have to do first. Key card. You know, you have this ability called lock. I'm not sure if people come into your room and steal your stuff. It never happened to me, but uh, I guess there must be some reason that he put that lock ability in there. So anyway, keep your key card handy. Let's see. Out of this. Take a look around. That's a pretty nice place, huh? Look at that artwork. The Hanged Rat and Broken Pixel. The colorful, this colorful mosaic doesn't seem to represent anything. The Hanged Rat. What could it be? I mean, I want a painting of a hanged rat in my room. That'd be pretty awesome. Let's see, there's some health hypos and the bandages. Uh, so the reason I told you to take that biology is so you can get that skill called Doctor. I think I got some pretty cool... Uh, I didn't have this last time. Antithermic padded rat hound leather overcoat. That sounds kind of nice. I don't know if this is starting gear is random or what. Or maybe it's based on what skills you pick. I, I don't know. Uh, but, but anyway, the reason I had you take that doctor skill is that the hypo can be used at any time. Uh, but the uh, bandages, you have to be 40% 
your health has to be at least 40% to use one of those. Which a couple of uh, combats is going to easily get below that. You can't use it during combat. So, in which case you have to come all the way back here to the base, go to the hospital uh, to heal up. If you take that doctor skill though, you can use the bandages no matter how damaged you are. So definitely worth picking up. Uh, the hypos are very expensive and very rare, so you only want to use those in extreme cases. And to make matters even worse, they got pretty serious cooldowns on, on both, so... At any rate, it helps to have those bandages. Now, if you want, if this is your first playthrough, you probably want to look all the re... all these rooms, look in all of the uh, containers and everything. I don't particularly want to spoil the surprises for you, other than I'll just say <laughs> it's probably worth your while to make sure you explore the whole base every container. I can't resist. I, I just have to click on these burrows, you know. It's... Are you playing these games? Do you ever... Are you, are you one of those types that's able just to walk past crates and barrels, or do you have to stop and click on them? Now, that's a big old chunk of text there. In addition to his opaque glasses. This is Hadrian Tanner. He's the guy that's going to give us our first missions. And so congratulations. Welcome to our community. You scored very, very well on our tests. No small feat. Okay, try my best not to disappoint. I've yet to know other South Gators, but I have a good feeling I'll fit in with the rest of the crowd, or is there going to be a party or something? Let's try that. <laughs> party! Usually the case, but sadly not this time. Oh, bummer. Okay, are you ready for some field work? Heck yeah! Do I get to shoot stuff? Well, I don't actually have a gun, but uh, okay. <laughs> actually, I was just kidding. It's always fun to pick the weirder options to see what happens. <laughs> uh, last playthrough, I, I picked uh, some really obnoxious dialogue options, and actually, they actually killed me uh, right off the bat. The one guy teleported me somewhere, and the other guy just slugged me. So, I used to be polite. So down in the tunnels, just to the north of Crossroad Caves, lies a series of abandoned outposts. And they fell to decay. So I'm liking this already. I love exploring sort of ruined... Uh, settings. Uh, activate the main power generator that's located there. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get it operation. So there we go. Harold in engineering. I think he's also said I need to go to talk to somebody in the armory. Yeah, what, what kind of credits are we going to get for this? Let's see. How is this task credited? Are we taking them or just all right? <laughs> I guess it's kind of interesting role playing possibilities. You don't have to go to the... If you want to play that as a psionicist, you could go to the doctor. Now, is it just me or does this room right here look very much like that opening uh, room in Police Quest? I don't know if that's just entirely coincidental, but that's what I thought of. Let's just go into the elevator and get our gun first, I think. Go to the armory. I don't know if it's going to let me get a sledgehammer right off the bat. I hope so. I want to specialize this guy in, uh, in melee combat. Let's see. Lucas, a short man, rises from behind the desk. <laughs> the heavy case meets the top of a desk with a thud. Oh, he's got a grenade case. Oh, wow. So he's banging his grenade case on the desk. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> Don't worry, Matt. I'm not going to blow us up. Uh, I think we better get out of here as quickly as possible. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Can I have my weapon back? Of course, it was the 5 mil pistol and some ammo. He produces the pistol in such bad condition people would pay to get rid of it. Ah, that shyster. Guns are for wussies. I'll take a knife. Uh, Newton's knife. Or Newton's gun. Okay. Look at this bartering system here. So quite a few items. Got a lot to look forward to as you get more credits. Uh, you can see these are blueprints. which goes with the crafting system. It's kind of an interesting system here. Uh, so the way it works, you, once you buy the blueprint, say SMG, combat knife, or whatever, you can make pretty much any SMG with it, provided you have the components. And then on the various components, there will be restrictions on what skill level you have to have to use it. Uh, so to make special bullets, you might have to have a mechanic skill, 15, let's say, chemistry uh, skill so high. Another twist is that you can't sell anything to anybody. All the... Uh, People that will barter with you will only take certain items. And they'll list those out across the top. And it's worth taking notes and then writing those down or maybe having the wiki open or something. Because uh, when you have stuff to sell, you need to remember who will actually buy it. 
Uh, let's see, go to the engineering section. Somebody here I was supposed to talk to. As you can see, these loading times are pretty quick. You know, of course, I would prefer it if it was instantaneous, but you know, <laughs> what can you do? I guess there's some technical reason why you have to wait for those. Okay, let's see. So we have to figure out from Harold here. He's going to give us, uh, I think, a flux capacitor. Or a flux controller. Okay. Flux capacitor, flux controller. <laughs> I was getting those two confused. All right, reactivate all of the outposts. Uh, the deal is, it's going to be, we only have to do three, but you get a bonus if you do five. And you're going to earn that bonus, baby, because that fifth one, whew, as you'll see in a minute. See, there's a blueprint for a sledgehammer, but I don't think I can afford to buy the all the components for it. I will go ahead and pick up some of these lock picks. Those are always valuable. I think I also need to get my uh, hacker tool, the hack sewer. I have to get that from the engineer. I think I forgot to get that a while ago. Again, it's also worth uh, taking notes of who has the components, the blueprints, uh, so that you don't have to talk to everybody over and over again if you forget. Let's see, I'm going to go in here and get my hack sewer real quick. I think we'll be ready to go kill some rat hounds. Ezra! This guy appears to be blind, but he's actually a very powerful psionicist. Psionicist? Psionist? Psionist? <laughs> not to be confused with Scient Scientologist. Uh, I'm not going to do that with this character. Uh, if you do go that route, though, uh, you get some extra quests right here at the beginning. It's kind of neat. Let's see. Look and see what this guy's got. Uh, what you want is this hack sewer tool, because without that, you won't be able to break into the electronic doors, or the electronic locks, even if you have the hacker skills. So. Instead of the lockpicks, they use this hack sewer tool, but it takes juice, so you need to keep buying batteries. All right, I think we're good to go. You want to be very careful where you click if it's a red. You know, if you click over a door or something and it's red and you're seen clicking on that, you're pretty much guaranteed death <laughs> at this point. <laughs> no warning. Let's you know, so be careful where you click. See that security camera? I guess if you were stealthy enough, you could time it just right and maybe get in there. Let's just see what happens here. So I need a hacking skill of 30 to get in there. All right, are we ready to go or should we go to anywhere else? Let's just go. So once you've done all of your setting up, initializing your character kind of things, you're ready to go out into the caves. So this guy will jerk us around a little bit about opening these gates and he'll apparently kill you if you get some kind of disease, but we won't tell him. Keep that little detail to ourselves if we happen to. Here's the door. It'd be nice if I could get in there. Looks like there's some weapon cabinets back there. Lock picking 100. Must be some really cool stuff in there. I wonder if at some point in the game you come back and you fight these guys. Maybe take over the base. I don't know. Okay, let's talk to old Jonas here. Old Jonas. This guy's apparently a scavenging genius. Crossroad watch. The only way to get into our station. So you want to ask him about the outposts because he will give you a quest here. Tells you basically where to go. Very helpful information. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, here we go. So he's lost his old digital watch. So we'll see if we can find that while we're out as well. All the experience we can get will be much appreciated. I think that's all we really have to do with him. Somehow you can get him to trade some stuff with you. Let's see, how do I get him to trade with me? Yeah, there we go. So harder. And this guy, I think, sells some blueprint traps. Traps of various types. Looks like he's got some boot components there. Some belts. So I always like to scroll over there and see what all the they'll buy, as well as what they are selling. Get those lockpicks and hypos. So I guess if we find some traps and we don't want them, we can come back here and sell them. Or lockpicking devices. I probably won't be selling those because they're kind of hard to come by. I think we're done here. I see a barrel. And 
and a nine. Okay, open her up, and let's go fight some rat hounds. <laughs> we have red beady eyes staring at you through the darkness. Okay. It's pretty dark in here, but I can see. And there's our first battle, rat hounds. Go ahead and equip my steel dagger. I think I have anything else to equip at this point. Let's see how this melee character works out now. So it works on an action point system, as you can see over there on the right. Wow. I like that. Just take this. Just like I was doing 15 damage a pop to him with this knife. Not bad. Of course, he also did quite a little sliver of damage to me there. Not too bad. There's another hypo. I love a game that lets you kill ri uh, rats right off the bat. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, so obviously you have their rats in a row. Power switch. So I'm gonna have to find that generator before that'll work. Take some bullets. I guess I can always trade those bullets if I decide that I want to stick with melee. Uh, a throwing knife, but I think that depends on yeah the throwing skill, not the melee skill. I don't know if you could use it as a melee weapon in a pinch or not. Probably not. Okay, moving on. Oh, some rats. He's on the other side of that gate. I don't know if I can... I was wondering if I could just <laughs> stick him right through the, through the gate and not have to fight him. It looks like I have to open the gate. So you can see these guys, even with that dodge maxed out, they just... Look, I mean, I'm almost down to half health already. Also, another kind of annoying thing about the game, you really have to be sure that you're clicking right on the monster. If you get in a hurry, like I do frequently, and click a little bit beside him or something, you'll move instead, lose some of your precious uh, action points that way, and even uh, cost you a battle. Okay. Got some adrenal glands. There are, there's a blueprint you can buy that will let you do things with those weird sort of animal parts you pick up. Now these rocks over here, I haven't quite figured out what the deal is with these yet. I guess maybe if you have a sledgehammer, you can break them up and get past there. It's probably a little secret area. I'm going to put my lockpick there on my bar. No annoying mini game. <coughs> Hello, Fallout. <coughs> put up our box capsules. You get so tired of uh, playing that Fallout game and all stupid, every little lock to go through that sequence over and over it wasn't really all that fun to begin with. Okay, moving on. Pretty sure there's some more rats around here for that fight. Yep. These guys have pretty high initiative. I gotta say, I'm kind of liking this uh, melee character so far. You know, it's doing about as much damage as I was with the guns on my other character, and I don't have to worry about bullets, which is really cool. I like the music too; it really sets a good tone. At least to me, it never got never got boring or old. Okay, moving on, kind of got. If you ever play that game Alien Fires for the Amiga, <laughs> I think I'm probably the only person in the world that's ever played that game. It kind of reminds me of that in terms of the. Acoustics. Okay, what else do we have there? Oh, there comes a little rat hound. And how cool would it be to have a rat hound leather coat? Man, that'd be awesome. I don't care if it stinks, it smells good to me. Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> this, you know, I, I want a, like an axe. <laughs> I don't know if there's an axe in this game at some point. I mean, just slashing at these things with a little dagger is not quite doing it for me. I bet a sledgehammer would be very satisfying. Okay. This guy doesn't have any kind of stealth whatsoever, so I'm not even going to bother trying to stealth around it. Now, my other character could actually slip up on these rats and kill them before they could even get a shot in. Which, that was pretty cool. I'm wondering if maybe uh, <laughs> I should have put some stealth on this guy. <laughs> Man, this is taking a bite. Dodge is practically worthless at this stage, I guess. Armor's not all that great either, I'm sure. 
And, uh, by the way, you know, your armor and weapons and all that stuff degrades with use, so... Gotta make sure you have some repair kits handy. Just another little complication. What am I missing? They always hit, and I have a high percentage of missing. You know, a 95% chance of uh, hitting this thing, I'm missing. Shows you some, tells you something about my luck. Okay, let's see if we got anything to see in the remains. Apparently not every rat has a, has a skin. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think this is the one that has the generator in it. Yep, there we go. Stick in that flux controller. Turn it on. One of those nice little mad scientists effects going on it. You know, it's, somebody, if you've if you ever done any game design work, you're looking at something like this and you're thinking that if just one guy did 90% of the work on this, I mean, look at the little details everywhere. I mean, it's, you really get an appreciation. Oh, see. <laughs> Clicked in the wrong spot and now the rat's going to get a free swipe at me. But anyway, trust me when I say just. The idea that one guy did so much of the work on this is really impressive. I mean, this to me plays as well as the original Fallout game. And that had a pretty sizable team on it. So, I have nothing but respect for Stig and, and what he's accomplished here. Okay, looking at these remains. Now, thinking that door to the north of me is a pretty bad encounter. Actually, I think I have to go a little further to get to that really nasty encounter. But there's one battle here where I was able to get through it the first time, but I had to use basically all my syringes, <laughs> all of my, uh, every basically every trick I had uh, to get past it. I'll see how I do with this character. It'd be a pretty good test of my thing. All right, so, man, I'm going through these bandages off quick. I know you can make the hypos at one point. You get a recipe for those. I don't remember if I saw a recipe for the bandages or not. Man, I sure hope they have those though. At least a place where you can buy a however many you want. All right, so I think that is. Yeah, there's another switch over there. So this is uh, another one done here. Let's see. Hacksaw tool. Got to charge it up first. Then I can open up this safe. Stick that on the little quick bar. Hacking again. No need for a stupid mini game. Thank you for that. Unfortunately, my uh, hacking skill is insufficient, so I have to level that up. Come back. And usually, it is worth uh, coming back. There's pretty good stuff in those chests. Let's see if we can find these other three uh, rooms, and I think that'll this first quest will be enough. And maybe I'll show you some of my other character, and that'll probably do it for this. I think you have a pretty good taste of the game. Let's go ahead and open up that one. I think I have to do three minimum. I've never been able to do the five. Maybe I'll just go for all five this time. Let's see. So what is that? Three so far. This would be three. Now, my other character had a high perception score. And when he went into that room, he actually managed to find a trap door there. So he, got, he could get into that other one that was locked through the trap door. So that just shows you right there, you know, there's more than one way. Kind of like the old uh, Deus Ex, right? And there's more ways to do things than just you know, lock picking or you're screwed. Okay, you level up that perception score. I don't know, maybe there's a way to get in there with hacking somehow. I even found one spot that if you had a high agility score, you could get past. Climbed over some rocks. This is the jump pile. Okay, moving on. Let's see, there's some rat hounds. Now, one trick is, if you see the mob and you click on return or enter or you can enter combat yourself and get the first attack 
Otherwise, I think they pretty much get the first attack. So, you don't want to just go running around pale mail around the corners, you know, if you can... If you're a little bit more patient than that, you might get the drop on some monsters. Of course, stealth makes it even easier. Yeah, I never got to a point in this game where I was just totally comfortable killing monsters without any, taking any pain. You know, every battle had its consequences. So I guess if I had my throwing skill up, I could throw something at this guy before he got to me. But I'll just go ahead and charge in here. Wow, I mean, it's, they really do a lot of damage. I'm starting to think that dodge skill is just completely uh, useless. Maybe I should have just used that to power up my crafting so I can make some better armor instead. Okay, got a critical hit on him. That's always nice. Oh, there we go. That guy had a one of the oddities on him. So I can level up. Oh, thank God. Oh, I need to put points everywhere. <laughs> Go ahead and puff up this melee some more. So, okay, what else? Maybe maybe the dodge will be useful at, at 23. We shall see. I'm going to puff hacking a little bit. 15. Lock picking up to 20. That should be pretty good. And I'll go ahead and put some points into throwing as well. I had some grenades earlier, and I actually, uh, my throwing skill was so poor, I actually blew myself up with a grenade. <laughs> Kid you not. I guess you, it takes some skill to lob something a few feet away from you in a general direction. Well, let's see if I can dodge something now. It's like he missed there once. <laughs> That's an improvement. So it looks like you can't stack your action points, so you have those little movement points at the end. Looks like it's worth uh, moving a little bit. You have to pay attention to the arithmetic with these, because if you know, sometimes just having one more action point means you can use your weapon again. Uh, I think, what was it, dexterity that gave you the action points? I have to go back and look at that. Clearly, the more action points you have, the better. Wow, I got a 29 crit on that one. I'm gonna try out this uh, throwing knife here. See how that works. So 12 damage, not bad, but doing a lot more damage uh, up close and personal. I guess if you had enough movement points, you could actually just keep running away and using your ranged attacks on them. You also have some pretty cool traps and nets and things you can throw over them to keep them in place. Of course, if you're a psionicist, you have all kinds of stuns. There we go. Just hack it to death. My deck. I love that sound. You notice up in the corner of my portrait there, it says my gun. It's got a little picture of a gun there. It's actually not a knife, but anyway, that indicates that it's damaged, and I have to go in and fix it. Let's see. So, go into my inventory, I think. Find a kit, mechanical repair kit. Okay. There, good to go. And we're ready to go hack up some more rats. So it's quite possible to die just fighting those rat hounds, but I wanted to show you what I consider to be the first real challenging battle. Uh, this Milan Ratula. Cool name for a villain. Uh, so you can, he's got a couple of pet rats there. This is probably me, and this is, this is what I would be doing in this scenario, right? I mean, I mean this Ratula guy. Matula. Uh, so he's got a couple of pet rats. Oh, God, this guy will just kill you. One shot you. You won't even get to attack, so... I'm going to try a couple different strategies here. Make sure I'm healed up all the way. And unfortunately, I, I, I didn't get any grenades or anything on this guy. It seemed like my other character had some, uh, uh, some kind of... Uh, grenades and traps and things. He does have some sandals though. Huh? Those will come in handy. I think he's been walking around barefoot all this time. Okay, let's see. What do I want to do? Uh, there's some explosive barrels back there. You know, I wonder if I could uh, taunt him a little bit or aggro him and run, run all the way back to that barrel. Let's see, I'll just go ahead and try talking to him. So intimidate. So I guess if your intimidate score was high enough, you could just avoid this whole unfortunate affair. 
Oh, look at that. They're all gonna get to shoot me before I get to move. Hey, it looks like I even have a damage over time effect going. Uh, okay, hit my syringe. The only problem is that's gonna have a huge cooldown now. I won't be able to use it for quite a while. Uh, wasn't quite able to take out Grisco. So, I'm guessing this is it for me. Oh, man, look at the damage that dude's doing with a crossbow. Got one more turn, but everything's on cooldown, so all I can do is try to run. And I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can think of another approach. I don't know. I wish I had some traps. I'm kind of thinking they put that barrel there for a reason. Uh, I can't figure... I don't, I don't know how I would manage to lure him all the way back there, though. Tell you what, though, this time I'm just not even going to try talking. <laughs> just go in, guns blazing. <laughs> Let's see, I'll throw a knife at the right. There we go, guys, attention. I'll see if I can run, run away, get to a little bit better of a position. Again, if I could get, just, you know, take them on one at a time somehow, that would undoubtedly help. Okay, let's... Oh, no, he's... Uh, not what I wanted to do. I can't quite get take care of that rat in one turn. Let's see, I might be able to uh if this guy doesn't kill me. Looks like a little bit of range helps. I'm dodging those uh arrows that he's or bolts, I guess. Let's see, I might I might be able to uh to do this if I can stay out of that guy's uh, attack. Okay, here we go. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I've only got a 76% chance to hit him. Ah! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> sorry. Now, this, this, this time it's personal. This time it's personal. I don't care if this, uh, if this video is four hours long and I have to do this 400 times. I will see this bastard dead. Okay, let's see. What did I... I think I had the right idea there, actually. I think that was the right idea. Just kind of lure him out one at a time. Go ahead and arm up a gun this time. Probably won't be able to hit anything since my gun skill is like zero. Well, let's try it anyway. Actually, can I... Yeah, can I just throw a knife again? Alright. Okay, let's back out of here. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just chucked a knife at your pet rat. Now I'll be going. Okay, you know he's coming. Oh, no. Oh, I got that aim shot off. Looks like I got him by himself this time, though. That's nice. Oh, crossbow bolt to the head. Come on. Oh, he healed himself. Son of a gun. Oh no, come on. Well, guess what? I can heal myself too. <laughs> He's dead. All I gotta do is finish off these rats. That shouldn't be too bad. Let's go, come on. Yeah, no help's coming, bastard. Let's kill him. He's dead. Let's go. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, got me a new steel dagger. A crossbow, all kinds of good stuff there. Those training points, man. Where's my health? What? 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 <laughs> so let's move on to my other character. Okay. Now what I wanted to show you here was some of the sort of stealthy elements of this game. Uh, so, I'm in this ventilation shaft, and I could sneak around. There's actually some of those rats actually hanging out in the air shafts. No idea how they got there, but, uh, yeah, yeah, they're there. So I can slip around and see where these cams are, and see where the robots are. And on this particular level, I don't know if it's possible to defeat the, uh, those robots somehow. Maybe if you're better than me, you, maybe you could, but... I found it absolutely necessary to use stealth. I had to slip around them. As you can see, this guy is, is really nice and stealthy. He can sneak up on these rats and kill them before they can even uh, 
do anything to him. So, you know, the stealth option might be the, one of the better strategies. Let's see if I can try to wait for that to cool off and then I can slip up and kill him. Uh, this was actually a pretty exciting level. I like the... it wasn't that hard. I'm not usually very good at games like Thief and where you really have to be sneaky. Uh, but I was able to do this one on a couple of tries. Oh, look at that. One of those... You just got that last little sliver left, but you can still chew you up. You got you know some some games if the if they're wounded they do less damage. I don't know why more games aren't like that. I guess it'd have to make your character the same way, which would kind of suck. But it always stinks when the character has a little sliver of health left, but is still nailing you for full damage. Okay. Trying to find out where it is I need to go. So you can look. So that was like a pretty safe place to come in. You're going in there. There was a rat in there. And kill him. So one thing I did like about the game is the, the pacing of the combat. You know, even though you do have to wait for each critter to take its turn. Uh, he didn't overdo it. They didn't overdo it with the animations, so it, it goes it moves at a pretty fast clip. Get through these combats, and like I say, usually <laughs> even uh, fighting rats, it can be a life or death struggle. So it never got old to me or boring. It's always exciting watching those uh, uh, turns play out. Go ahead and see what this guy can do. Uh, another thing I should mention: some of the items you can't use unless your uh, offensive capability is high enough. So certain guns. I assume certain uh, melee weapons too, you probably have to be a certain level to get past them. I'm not, I'm not sure what this guy's... Uh, oh, so his hacking's a long ways away. So anyway, there you go, under rail. I really, I'm really, really enjoying this game. It's, it's difficult, definitely doesn't baby you, but it's not so hard that you just feel like you can't do it. You know, it's, 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 it's actually just at that sweet spot of difficulty where when you lose, you don't feel like you were cheated or robbed or just unbalanced or something. Uh, you just feel like uh, your strategy wasn't quite right. The rolls didn't quite work out, but you know you want to go. You always want to go back, load to get loaded up again, try it again, uh, tweak your strategy a little bit, uh, which I love that. You know, it's just right in that right uh, sort of sweet spot for difficulty. Uh, the areas are fun to explore. Lots of the characters to meet. There's a lot of variety with the skill systems. They've got a huge crafting system I didn't even go into here. But lots of uh, interesting aspects to that. I mean, I don't see how you can go wrong with this game. It's actually on Steam right now for 14 bucks, And I'm actually preferring... I'm playing this game more than I am uh, Fallout 4. Which is, what, 60 bucks? You know? I mean, it's an absolute no-brainer. And this is one that I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't feel good about waiting around for a Steam sale. I mean, it's a labor of love. It's pretty much one guy's uh, dream project is... Uh, you know, I'd love to see him be able to make more games like this, a sequel. <laughs> not even done with this, already thinking about uh, a sequel, that's how good it is. Uh, it's not on GOG yet. I saw some uh, some forum posts over on GOG where they're... I guess a lot of people are complaining that it's not on there yet. Actually, I have no idea if it's even going to be there eventually. <laughs> I have no idea. So if you guys know about the GOG situation, uh, please uh, say something in the comments. Because I, I have no idea. So you see, with this level, I have to get to that corpse there. Oh, come on, can I slip? Can I make it? Can I make it? Come on. If they, if they spot me, I'm dead. Okay. Got it. Actually, <laughs> I forgot to take all. Oh, my God. Okay, come on, take all. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh, the camera shot spotted me. I can just get to the stairs, though. <sighs> any, any, anyway, guys, under rail, go pick it up. Absolute no-brainer. If you like the Fallout games, uh, you're going to love this. I'm uh, just having a great fun with it. And uh, I'd like to know what your thoughts are, too, so sound off in the comments. But anyway, that'll do it for under rail.
that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back soon. I don't know about next week. <laughs> Maybe not even next year, but uh, very soon I will be back uh, with a new, uh, probably a new interview series with the developer of this game, uh, Mr. Stig. Uh, don't know for sure yet. We'll just have to see how that shakes out, but that's probably what's going to happen next. So stay tuned. Seems like it's going to be really fun to hear about how he created this game uh, pretty much on his own. So really looking forward to chatting with uh, Stig. As always, I want to thank you very, 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 very much for your support of Matt Chat. Really, just awesome, guys. I really, really, truly appreciate it. I want to welcome a couple of new people, a couple of new Matt Chatters, people who've stepped up to the plate, brave heroes, if you will. Jan Michael Stute, or Stutt, Dustin Allen, and Henrik Norberg. So thank you very much, guys. Very cool of you to... Uh, support the show. Now what about that news from the Matt Cave? All right, quite a bit of news. Uh, first of all, uh, Devin Veneria uh, wrote in about his game, uh, Monstrosities. It's a turn-based fantasy game that he describes it as Similar to the old gold box games, uh, but without the story, RPG elements, and cool graphics. Anyway, go check it out. I think you will uh, <laughs> at least want to see what he's done there. I think it uh, looks pretty cool. haven't had a chance to play it yet, though, so if you do uh, play that, let me know what you think. I think he's only asking a buck for that, so uh, go check it out. Uh, also, a couple people wrote in about this music video. It's called, uh, I think it's Mechanical Blacks Together in Elect Electric Dreams Video. Uh, what's cool about it, uh, for, for us, it's, it's a pretty cool metal uh, cover song. But there's a lot of uh, really cool retro computing uh, themes in the video, so go check that out. Uh, and then finally, uh, David Beatty sent this in. Man sues Bethesda over Fallout 4 addiction. Uh, so this 28-year-old Siberian guy uh, was playing, apparently got the game, played it for three weeks straight, his life fell apart. Now he's trying to blame Bethesda for that. And, uh, it's kind of silly, but, you know, <laughs> it's, you know it's, it's okay to be silly this time of the year. So finally, a bit of sad news. Could have been worse. Uh, the One of the Hero U uh, key programmers, a woman named Sydney, was in a car accident recently. Uh, it's put her out of work for a while, uh, but thankfully, apparently she's going to be okay. But if you're a fan of that project, or even if you're not, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to head over there and uh, wish her well and a speedy recovery. And I'm just glad it wasn't worse. All right, I think that will do it for the news. Uh, what about that ale of the week? Well, of course, with Christmas being here, I wanted to get something really special uh, to round out the year. And this is what uh, <laughs> Reese over at the uh, Cobras recommended. The Rum King's Imperial Stout Aged in Rum Barrels. So you heard me right, it's not bourbon barrels. Usually they do bourbon barrels or sometimes whiskey barrels, but this is rum barrels, which I'm kind of intrigued. I always, uh, you know, rum is probably my favorite. Uh, of the liquors, I don't really partake that much because <laughs> it tends to uh, make me pretty stupid a little too quickly. Uh, but anyways, it'd be an interesting flavor combination here. Let's see what else. Complex notes of toffee and vanilla lure you in with a roasty, toasty malt forward body burly enough to unshiver those timbers, make way for the rum king. <laughs> Nearly navy strength. That's pretty fun. Uh, let's see, alcohol, 10.5% by volume, so definitely on up there. Uh, not insane, but definitely something you wouldn't want to chug quickly. 70 IBU, so I'm not sure exactly. I'm kind of just learning about this IBU and how that works, but apparently that's international bitter units. And I believe the higher the number, the bitterer it is. <laughs> bitterer? The more bitter it is. Uh, so anyway, I guess 70 IBU, we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Uh, so this is brewed by the Indeed Brewing Company out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. So right up the road for me. Uh, Rum Kings. Looks really good. Interesting uh, concept. So let's get it open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Rum King here in the rather excellent drinking room. <sighs> I've been smelling it. Uh, it's very, a very nice aroma to this. You don't get like alcohol fumes or anything. <laughs> Definitely not like a... You know, uh, sn uh, sniffing a bottle of rum or anything. Uh, you smell some kind of light, sort of cherry-like uh, aromas to it. <sighs> That's really what kind of stands out to me. Maybe a little bit of a vanilla, very light. Um, anyway, it smells really good, so let's give it a taste. I 
actually goes down uh, nice and smooth. It's, it's, I guess it's a little bit bitter, uh, but not, not bad at all. You get sort of cherry chocolatey flavors. I think that toffee uh, description was pretty apt there. You definitely taste a little bit of a toffee flavor. That's a sort of toffee chocolate flavor coffee. <laughs> I'll, what did I say there? Chocolate, coffee, toffee, and cherry is what I'm tasting here. I'm not sure that I would know that this was aged in rum barrels if I didn't know about that already. This kind of tastes like a, a really nice uh, imperial stout here. I'll try it one more time. Or is it imperial pale ale or imperial stout? No, it's an imperial stout. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, a bit on the thick side, uh, texture-wise. It's definitely not something, again, you'd want to chug. You'd probably pour this into like a little brandy snifter and enjoy it uh, over time, let's say. Anyway, I really enjoy this. I'm going to give it a full 5 out of 5 drinking horns. Again, with the caveat, it's a little bit on the bitter side and it's definitely on the stronger side. So <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Stay away. Uh, but otherwise, I think you will enjoy this. So uh, 5 out of 5 for the Rum King uh, Imperial Stout aged in rum barrels. And apparently that is, uh, I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's also, it also says that it's brewed with cane sugar. So maybe that's why it's so sweet. Anyway, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was looking for funny quotes about Christmas. And I don't think you're going to do better than this one. This is uh, from Bob Phillips. It goes something like this. There are three stages of man. He believes in Santa. He doesn't believe in Santa. And he is Santa. <laughs> See you guys next week. Give me something nice and shiny. And if you don't, I've got something nice and shiny for you, and it's called an axe.